A while back, near the end of Splatoon 2, I reviewed all of the base multiplayer modes for the game, and now, with a lot of time passing, and a Splatoon game that's fixed a lot of the other issues with the game, we can take a more clear look at the updated versions of these modes in Splatoon 3. Whether it be indirect or direct changes, things are a little bit different now, and today, I want to take a look at all these objectives and see if they are really something that adds to the game, or do they have negative interactions. So I'm going to break them all down. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoy, and let's get started. Let's start with the beginner-friendly mode. Turf War. And, I mean, yeah, that's basically its biggest strength. Getting into shooters is a bit difficult, and having it to where you can just paint the floor to get value, and it's incredibly easy to understand the wind condition, I mean, it's just paint on the floor, is very nice. It's a good way to introduce people to the game, as well as get the basics of map control, one of the most important concepts to understand. So, when it's being used as a new player introduction, I think it's amazing. My issues with this mode come from when they try to make it competitive. And I don't mean something like Splatfest, though I guess it can have implications there. Nintendo frequently features this in its competitive tournaments, and this is where the mode starts to break down. Not only does this mode have one of the worst starts, as teams have to paint a lot of their base before even being able to fight each other, keep in mind this is a three minute game mode, but on top of that it has the quote, last 30 seconds problem. Basically, if you're able to get a sizable numbers advantage over the enemy players in the last 20 to 30 seconds or so, you more than likely can win the entire game there, regardless of how it's going. I've seen people people defend this by saying, okay, yeah, but that's just a last second comeback. That can happen in the ranked modes too. And while it's true, the difference is there's a reward for holding the map control for a long time. This in ranked modes is what a knockout is. It is the ability to end the game early if you are winning for so long that the enemy team is not getting back in for a sizable amount of time. And yes, this is why Turf War is so prone to spawn camping and that whole debate happens, because when one team is able to steamroll the other team, there's no way to make it end early. But even outside of knockouts, if you control a zone all the way up until one, the other team has to control the zone to get to zero to get the lead. And if you even flip the zone back, you apply a penalty. Turf War is like saying, you controlled the zone until one, but they controlled the zone for 10 points when the game ended. That's worth more, so actually they win. There is no way of getting around this problem, and unfortunately it has plagued Turf. It's even made the competitive metas four it be kind of weird. In Splatoon 2, the meta was three to four L3 nozzle noses at one point. Why? Because when the last 30 seconds are so important, having four specials that'll keep you alive on a weapon that can paint the map really well while still fighting okay was really good. Again, this doesn't need to be a competitive mode, but it might want to have a variant like that that can apply some of these changes considering Nintendo keeps trying to force it into tournaments, such as in the North American Open, where it determines the entire top 16 seeding. Anyway, let's get on to the actual ranked modes with Splat Zones. This is basically King of the Hill, but with paint. If you paint a bit of the zone, you can contest it to stop control, and then if you paint about 90% of it, you will control the zone, applying a penalty to the other team. This mode incentivizes pushing ahead of the objective to keep people from being able to frequently contest it, and has a fairly balanced passive special advantage. I'll be showing the amounts at the bottom of the screen at some point during each mode, but every mode has this as basically a way for players to be able to get back in more easily, and it kind of just helps the modes flow better. I have an entire short video on this if you want to see a bit of my commentary on it. Regardless for zones, it's the most common mode for it. It's basically a way for the team outside of mid to be able to retake a bit faster, and they have a bit faster special charge as shown here. There are two main problems that can happen with this mode. One, approaching the zone from a single area makes it incredibly difficult to retake because the defending team doesn't have to push as far ahead as compared to something like Tower Control or Rainmaker. This is the part where Splatoon 3's maps really, really hurt this mode. Even one of the better maps, like Barnacle, for example. You pretty much have to try to retake your stack. There's no effective way to retake as a team without it, and so it means that you have to brute force into that area. Keep in mind, this is one of the better Splatoon 3 maps in the game. Others have it way worse. And because of that, maps like Crab Leg, where you can actually get to the zone from a unique angle, function very differently from many of the stages we have. So yeah, the maps hurt this quite a lot. Besides that, it is really just double zones. Double zones can be a bit weak because it's much easier to contest the zone when they're smaller, and you only need to contest one zone to stop the points. In Splatoon 1, this was a huge problem because Split Zones maps would be very far apart, whereas in Splatoon 2 and 3, they put them all basically next to each other. In this game, it's fine. The only one that's pretty easy to contest is using bombs on the rail of Flounder, 
here, and considering how favored that map is for the team holding mid control, it's probably a good mechanic there. Zones is relatively balanced and just needs some fixes with the maps. I think tower control, design-wise in my opinion, is the worst mode in the game. Now, I get what they're doing here, it's payload and the passive special advantage benefits the aggressive team, there's some cool stuff like tower jumps that can get you to different paths, but uh, let me get to the point. I don't think payload is very fun. Sitting on a tower that doesn't do anything for you as it goes across an automated path is just not fun. So riding the tower is really boring, and on top of that you might have noticed that, well, that means the person riding tower doesn't have a lot to do. And you're right, they don't. That is why in this mode, the attacking team gets passive special advantage much more than the defenders. This is the only mode that really works like that, and yeah, it leads to a ton of steamrolls. So not only is this mode arguably one of the least fun to push on for whichever player has to be on the tower, it's also one of the most annoying to defend on because it's still stacked act against you. On top of that, this game still has some terrible tower control path layouts. Seriously, when the objective moves away from the defending player's base, it becomes harder to retake the tower, and because you get special advantage, you can effectively camp the tower there. Museum and Crab Leg are very prime examples of that. I can get why some people like this mode. Trust me, I play Blasters. It's by far the best mode for my weapons. But I think it could use a major rework where riding the tower is more fun and possibly gives you more to do, and because of that, we can actually shift the special advantage to benefit the defenders. Anyway, let's talk about the other very mobile objective, Rainmaker, aka Reverse Capture the Flag. You get a super weapon, and then you push it to the enemy base along your own unique set of two to three paths in this game. Possibly one, if it's stuff like Inkblot, where the other path is terrible. Yeah, we got another mode that's really hurt by the map design. Rainmaker's biggest strength is your freedom of movement with the objective, creating your own unique paths and ability to push on, and this game does not have a lot of that said freedom. Even some of the better Rainmaker maps in this game like crab leg ultimately devolve into here are your two paths. On some stages that are played in Rainmaker, like Undertow, it's even quite difficult to switch between these two paths once you've committed to one. This leads to situations where, okay, the Rainmaker's very clearly going this way, all attackers and defenders go stack over here. I think the Rainmaker as a main weapon is fine. There's definitely some satisfying plays to make with it, but I don't know. I think it's in a weird spot where it just feels kind of annoying on both sides to use. Splatoon 1 Rainmaker also had this problem, to be fair, but at least the tornado was more satisfying to use, much more of a playmaking ability. They don't really need to change how the Rainmaker is shot, but they could. Outside of that, the passive special balance for this mode is fine. I like checkpoints, it prevents games from knocking out too quickly at lower ranks, which, yeah, it was a problem. However, there's two other big problems with this mode. One is stalling, which, to their credit, the devs have actually made a bit better. There's a lot better placement of Rainmaker free zones, and the do not retreat timer is harsher in this game. However, anytime you can camp the Rainmaker in a really dumb area, like, I don't know, brine water on the bottom left side, yeah, that can become very annoying. Especially in coordinated environments, it's very easy to just camp it there. And campy gameplay with a solid lead is just never fun. On top of that, I'd say it has one of the harshest metas out of all the ranked modes. Because the objective moves so fast, as well as having a Rainmaker shield that's so important to blow up, speed, damage per second, and reliable kill time are all incredibly important in this mode. This means things like bombs, which are already better than most other subs, are even better in this mode. This means high DPS weapons, which are usually already pretty good. Stuff like short-range shooters are even better in this mode. And it means that there is a lot of weapons that really struggle to see use here, because if you're slow and can't kill the Rainmaker quickly, it could be a big problem when you might be the one having to stop it. It's definitely not as big an issue, but I would say out of all the four ranked modes, Rainmaker probably has the harshest meta. At least compared to Tower Control, there's a lot of reasons to like this mode. I think the fast pace and unique objective with paths that you can choose is still quite fun, and I personally enjoy it. Even if I think in comp right now it falls a little flat. So this was where this section was going to end, but the Rainmaker challenge happened, and guys, I have to talk about this. What the hell? This mode is way better than the actual Rainmaker we have in the game. Okay, yes, the triple Rainmaker shot is way too broken, but that aside, the tacticooler effect for your quick respawn and special saver makes grabbing the Rainmaker way less risky. This is something people might actually want to do instead of top-level matches where people wait like two minutes to grab it until they super win a team fight because it's that bad. And on top of that, you can afford to make the Rainmaker a better weapon because you only have a 30 second timer with it. Stalling is the worst part of this mode and it is 
Giga nerfed in this version. It is horrible to sit back when you have that little a timer, especially if you end up in a do not retreat or Rainmaker free zone. So this mode actually makes people want to pick up the Rainmaker, makes the Rainmaker feel more powerful, has less of a consequence for picking it up in terms of losing your special in a player so people are more likely to grab it, and the worst attribute of the mode is better in it. Please have some version of this into the normal game. The 30 second timer is amazing. I like this. It's not perfect. Again, triple Rainmaker shot is still very stupid. It'd have to fire something different, but more powerful Rainmaker with 30 second respawn time is a great idea. Finally is Clan Blitz. This is a mode that I complained in Splatoon 2 was too complex and felt horrible in solo. In Splatoon 3, they actually addressed this. Clan spawns are now in clusters of threes, and you only need eight to make a football. This makes it much easier to do the objective, and there's much less of it cluttering the map. While the objective can be annoying to coordinate in solo, it's its strength in team coordination. When you can have people toss clams to each other to make a ball in a unique location, or be able to score properly with multiple people contributing to getting points, it can feel really satisfying. And on top of that, the way the special advantage works, while very complicated, is uniquely well balanced compared to the other modes. Being tied to holding a power clam gives an actual downside to having the passive special charge, locating one of your players. On top of that, I think this mode does a good balance between being stationary and mobile. A lot of times it can feel like zones with a focus on holding the middle of the map and just keeping control to get clams, but sometimes it's pushing more aggressively to get to the basket. There's still some complaints I have. Basket placements are sometimes not great. Some stuff like Sturgeon is way too easy to score in, and then there's other maps where the basket is really close to the enemy spawn and a bit hard to push into. But the main issue with this mode is crack and cheese. I think crack and cheese, while not broken, shouldn't exist. The fact that you can crack in, go from your side of the map to the other side of the map, then jump three people and, because practically nothing can kill them fast enough, score three power clams. Yes, it has counterplay, and yes, it's not broken broken, but it's a little bit too stupid. I don't think strategies should devolve to this and be worth this many points. So, I don't know, just make it so you can't super jump to a Kraken if you're holding a power clam or something. So, that's my perspective on the ranked modes. Honestly, a bit harsher than it was in Splatoon 2, because while without a lot of the problems with that game, it's a bit more clear what issues the objectives have. I still think these are overall positive, and I've definitely been very nitpicky with these, but I wish we got some more improvements to them. The changes they did to ranked Rainmaker and Clam Blitz were pretty good, and I'm kind of sad that Tower Control got nothing. That mode in particular could have gone some really interesting changes, and they seem to be on the right path with what they're doing in Rainmaker and Clams. So to end it on a high note, it seems like the devs are pretty aware of what the problems in these modes are, and are adjusting them for future games. Hopefully, it can just happen a little bit faster. Thanks for watching.